All right, so this is going to be an interesting one. It's from my blog called Kropotkin's Beard. It's like a deep dive into um, his classic work called The Conquest of Bread. And Kropotkin is an interesting figure because not only was he an anarchist, but he was initially a Russian prince, but he renounced his position to become an anarchist philosopher, and he was also interested in science, so he did some scientific work, and really just an interesting guy, and on top of that, he was also thrown in prison once, and he escaped, so that kind of gives you a sign of just how biased a lot of media is against, you know, anarchist figures, even even people with fascinating and sort of action-oriented stories like this guy, they're ignored, you know, like, that's one of the most badass things I could imagine, like being born a prince, and then saying, screw that, I'm going to become a, you know, a revolutionary, <laughs> like, that's a freaking crazy uh, story. But anyway, um, this piece is titled Kropotkin on whether human nature and history debunk anarchism, communism, and socialism. So um, I, I start off with a quote from Kropotkin himself. He says, at first sight, this objection to anarchist communism based on the alleged contradiction of human nature, well, he says, that seems very serious. However, the moment we consider human history more attentively, it loses its strength. We see first that hundreds of millions of men have succeeded in maintaining amongst themselves in their village communities for many hundreds of years, one of the main elements of socialism, that common ownership of the chief instrument of production, the land, and the apportionment of the same according to the labor capacities of the different families. And we learn that if the communal possession of the land has been destroyed in Western Europe, it was not from within, but from without, by the governments which created a land monopoly in favor of the nobility and the middle classes. We learn, moreover, that the medieval cities succeeded in maintaining in their midst for several centuries in succession a certain socialized organization of production and trade, that these centuries were periods of a rapid intellectual, industrial, and artistic progress, and that the decay of these communal institutions came mainly from the incapacity of men of combining the village with the city, the peasant with the citizen, and so jointly, or as so as jointly to oppose the growth of the military states, which destroyed the free cities. The history of mankind, thus understood, does not offer then an argument against communism. So that's again a quote from Kropotkin in The Conquest of Bread. So my response to that I actually agree with Kropotkin uh, to a large degree. Anarchist communism gives as good an argument in its favor as that of any of the political and social theories that have occupied so long the greatest part of the human imagination and exerted such an influence in shaping the destiny of nations. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the mainstays of um, human thought to have some sort of uh, communistic impulse. You know, so there's definitely something to what Kropotkin is saying. It has been said that communism has proved itself in practice only under really desperate conditions, but in history, at least some elements of anarchist communist ideas have always succeeded in establishing themselves against armed opposition, and some have always withstood the test of adversity no matter how thoroughly they've been beaten back by the authorities and their cultural systems. In fact, to this day, any and all vestiges of a true worker, consumer-controlled economy are feared for having a potential domino effect, to borrow terminology from American politics sometimes applied to Vietnam, either rightly or wrongly. The fear isn't necessarily the authoritarian strongman like Stalin or Mao, but of a truly empowered working class that does not need 
or want any system of outside authority to tell them what they can or must to do. As in past centuries, so also in future centuries, if humans make it that far, wars of aggression will doubtless break out and poverty and want will certainly increase, but elements of anarchist socialism will always prove themselves capable of rising above all of these difficulties. And so far as in a free society, science and the improvement of the economic conditions of the masses will be free from the oppressive hand of the authorities. And really when it comes down to it, jealousy or what the Christian Bible calls coveting is really at the core of these power dynamics and capitalism anyway. It's even more ironic in America where our politicians so often claim to be such righteous Christians, yet they ultimately promote and enforce a state capitalist economy that is based on the so-called seven deadly sins. Specifically, where we are told or actually commanded in the Bible, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his house, nor his field, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, not meaning buttocks, nor anything that is his. Well, you know, that's that's interesting because the question emerges, how are you going to keep up with the Joneses in your conspicuous consumption if you don't in some way covet what your neighbor has? Specifically, we are warned against the sin of or the sins of pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth. While those are all mainstays of the global capitalist system, which is so greedy as to put dollar signs on top of dollar signs, exploiting virtually anything imaginable for profit, and at times pulling the rug out from even its most humble servants for the crime of not being profitable enough for the system and its myriad taskmasters. So yes, anti-capitalists of all types inevitably are created by the system itself because it creates endless competitive dens of iniquity, and is propped up by swindlers and chicanery. One simply needn't read Marx or even Kropotkin to have some adverse reaction to the worst of what the system has to offer. In fact, they needn't agree with any leftist philosophy or philosopher at all. All they have to do is open their eyes and see the simple facts about what the system does and who it serves, and like magic, there might be some occasional legitimate scathing critiques right? So no power on earth can prevent this, no matter how effective the propaganda. And it is because of this that socialism, or something like it, has become it has become a matter of so much importance. It is therefore not the case that villainous authoritarians like Stalin or Mao or Marx himself have totally ruined the appeal of communism, socialism, or anarchism. No, it's that much like capitalism itself, the underlying ideas and their relevance keep springing up, evolving, mutating at least haphazardly into new forms. At the end of the day, I do not enjoy Kropotkin because I agree with everything he says. I don't, and I probably never will, but because I appreciate simply being able to read the views of someone who acted genuinely as a rebel, who looked at his society and his own position of privilege and said, in so many words, this is fucked up, there's something wrong here. Also, even if you disagree with Kropotkin and other leftist philosophers wholeheartedly, it's nevertheless true that if you can never face their ideas and assess them honestly, you are an intellectual coward. <laughs> you know, sorry. And these words by Kropotkin that I read earlier, I find little to disagree with factually and philosophically. It is simply a fact that, for the most part, power, powerful leaders came in and took possession of land and resources, using this power to essentially hold people hostage and make them servile and weak. And that's a trend that continues to this day. When powerful leaders speak of turning the clock back, they refer to a previous era where their powers and interests were never questioned. And um, that's really, you know, one of the things we're still seeing to this day. Um, so those are the words that I had um, for this blog entry. And um, you can go ahead and let me know if you agree. I would be 
quite shocked if everyone out there did, but you know, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hard pressed to find any major flaws in what Kropotkin was saying, especially, especially in hindsight, because we know that no, no matter what happens in history, the, uh, the government and uh, the capitalist system or really any system of authority is going to create rebels. So I fail to see how anybody could successfully debunk a claim like that. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, have a wonderful and majestic day. And, um, yeah, bye-bye.